What's good everybody? Welcome back to Cadillac Cartoons and today I'm going to show you how to print on any surface and I mean any surface in Adobe Photoshop. So as you can see in my Photoshop document I have a picture of a tree in a forest and I also have a picture of my logo. So what I'm going to do in this video is play with Photoshop's blending options or blending modes to make my logo look as if it's printed on this tree. I also have a couple other documents that we're going to do the same thing on but for now we're just going to focus on doing it with the tree for now. But with that being said, let's get started. So what I'm going to do first is position my logo so that way it fits onto the tree. So I'm going to have to resize it obviously, make it smaller. So that way it fits onto the tree like this. And once you're satisfied with the position, we can hit the enter button or the check mark that's up here. And there we go, we positioned it to the tree. Now what we're going to do is having our layers window up, we're going to hit this drop box that says normal. And once you hit that, you have a whole list of Photoshop blending options. So a good thing that Photoshop does is when you hover over each of these options, you get to see what your image looks like before you click on it. So for example, I'm going to hover over darken. And as you can see, there's a difference. I'm also going to go through each of these options so that way I can see which one that I truly want to go with. I think I'm liking soft light, but let me go over the rest of them real quick. Yeah, I'm thinking soft light would work for me or overlay. Actually, let's go with overlay. So after hitting overlay, we start to see some texture of the tree blending in with my logo and my logo itself blending in with both the texture and the colors of the tree, which makes my logo look as if it was just directly printed on the tree, which is exactly what we want to go for. But another option is to click on the logo layer and it's going to be a drop box right next to it that says opacity and by default it's at 100. So what you can do is reduce the opacity so that way it kind of sort of blends into the tree more. So I'm going to reduce that to about 60 and we start to see much of a difference. So if my logo was truly printed on this tree, it looks as if it's weathered away, which gives a more realistic approach. So being that this tutorial is quick and easy, it helps me achieve realistic results even though that's what I'm not initially going for. But yeah, that's how you do it with the tree. So let me switch to my next document so I can show you how to do it with curtains. So here's the picture of curtains that I was showing you from the beginning and I already have my logo on its own separate layer. So the first thing that I'm going to do is reposition that. I'm going to do it with one curtain. I'm just going to resize it, rotate it if I need to, do all that, but I'm not going to rotate it. So I'm just going to leave it like that and just, uh, you know, position it to where I want it to be. Okay. And now that we're satisfied with the position and size, we can hit the enter button or hit this check mark up here. Okay. And then we're going to go to our blending options, which is right here by this drop box that says normal. And we're just going to hover over each of these options so that way we can see which one we want to go for when it comes to printing on these curtains. And I think multiply looks good, but let me go over the other ones first. I think overlay would look good if these curtains were transparent in a way, but I, I still think multiply would have my vote. Yeah, let's go with multiply. But let's look at overlay one more time. Because overlay was the option we chose for the tree. But like I said, overlay would look good on these curtains if the curtains were transparent. But in this case, they're not. So I'm just going to go all the way up here to multiply. Just click that. And if you want to further blend this logo into the curtains, not just because of the colors, we just go up here to opacity and by default it's at 100. So I'm just going to reduce that. Just like play around with that setting. And there we go. In this case, since I'm doing it with curtains, you may need to warp a few sides, you know, right here where there's shade. But speaking of shade, the shades are very visible after we applied both this blending option and reduce the opacity of it. So that's looking pretty good. If you do want to warp each section, that's up to you, but I'm just not going to worry about that because from a different perspective, it already looks warped. But yeah, that's how you do it with the curtains. So let me switch to the last document and show you guys how to do it there. 
All right, so as you can see, I have a picture of my desk and it has some sort of a wood texture and it has some lighting on it. I'm gonna apply the logo to this part of my desk. So I already have my logo here. And the first thing that I'm actually gonna do is warp it so that way it looks like it's in perspective like the picture is. So I'm gonna go up here to edit and I'm gonna go to transform. Then instead of hitting warp, I'm gonna go to skew. And then I'm just gonna reposition these anchor points so that way I can actually warp it. Because when you hit the warp function on Photoshop, it actually uses curved lines to actually you know, warp it. But what I wanna do is use straight lines instead to help us get some perspective going. So I'm just gonna reposition that. And move this up a bit. Okay, and after I'm satisfied with the position, I can hit this check mark or hit the enter button. And there we go. So, I'm gonna click on this layer. I'm gonna go to our blending options, which is right here by the Dropbox that says normal and just hover over each of these different blending options or blending modes to see which one you think would work. So I think multiply would also work still, but let's go over these other ones. So this color bird one really captures like the texture of the desk because you see all these white lines because it's also capturing lighting on the left hand side. But again, let's go over each of these options. I think overlay would work for this one too because you know it still captures those texture lines with the lighting you know I kind of like this better because if I go back to color burn it's a it's like a darker version of it when you look at it yeah overlay would really look good but um, if I go under soft light soft light really looks like if I apply overlay and then reduce the opacity of it that's what soft light would look like and then hard light wouldn't capture a lot of texture of the desk, as you can see. But, you know, let's just keep scrolling. And I think vivid light and linear light are like other versions of hard light. Because vivid light does the same thing as hard light, but at the same time it changes the saturation of the colors. But I don't want to go for that either. I want to keep the colors the same. And then hard mix looks like it's a combination of three or more blending modes. Because it has mix in the name. And then these other ones, yeah, I think overlay would look good for this one. So hit overlay, and that's looking pretty good. So if I want, I can click on the logo layer again. I can either switch this to soft light or reduce the opacity of it and get that same result. Because you see what I'm saying now? The overlay blending option and me reducing the opacity would be the same thing as clicking soft light and not reducing the opacity. So that's what I was trying to say earlier. So I'm gonna change the opacity back to 100 because I like this better. And now my logo looks as if it was printed on the desk. But yeah, that's how you do it. That's how you print on literally anything in Adobe Photoshop. So if you liked the video or if you found it useful, give it a like and a comment, subscribe if you haven't, and tap the notification bell so you never miss an upload. And I'll see you in my next video. I can't let a nigga like Pat Kate.